Right here I'm talking with Andy and Samuel from the LEGO Technic team. So good to see you. Hi, yeah, welcome. Yes. And good to see you too. Hi. Good to see you. The Porsche has been so much fun. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, it was a really exciting project for us. It was uh, the first of something that we'd not done before. It was uh, giving a really deep, immersive building experience and uh, making something that really sat at the top of our, our LEGO Technic experience, but very different from our normal flagships. So it was a... Uh, yeah, a really great experience to, to find a partner to work with and uh, uh, of course being a, a Porsche fan as well then it was really exciting for me personally that we we found a Porsche and we worked together on this as the um, yeah it was uh, yeah it was just a, a really great experience uh, but also really important for us to make sure that we came with a, a really good experience for you guys to build with so it's really interesting to hear your experience of, of putting it together but um, yeah so when we when we went to Porsche and uh, they were really excited about the idea of creating this product together and uh, Uber Weber, the, the designer from our side that, that made the car, um, he was able to talk directly with uh, Andreas and uh, and he told him you know what uh, what was important and which the angle should be. So it was a really great experience to uh, to try and capture something that is you know so iconic but still be able to bring it together bring it to life with just our normal uh, lego technic elements that we use to create everything from aircraft to bucket wheel excavators and now uh, a porsche gt3 9, uh, 911 gt3 rs for you when you when you have designed a set a lego technic set um, and maybe two or three years later it is enjoyable to build this again or or are you done with it? So you think, oh, this is my model, but uh, I've built it like 50 times in the design process, I'm done. Uh, I think it's probably different for each designer, but uh, I know that when we do the design process, then we are building it many, many times over. Each time is getting slightly better, slightly better. And, and it's, it's that process which can, you know, you get used to the model and each time you make it better and you get that new success, if you like. So that then the final version that we give to you guys is hopefully the, the very best experience that you have. But um, I think from myself, uh, I get the chance to build all of the different models that we produce. So all of the models that we do, I get to do the test build for the, um, for the instructions to see how the experience is. So I get a real feel for all of the models that we create. So it's very difficult for me to then find another model to build. But uh, it's been a tradition in my family uh, that every year I would get uh, a big Technic model for Christmas. So even long, long time ago, I'm talking from... When, when I was, uh, you know, 12 years old or whatever. And um, it was really great for me at Christmas. I used to get this model and then I used to, that, that was the end of Christmas then. I would get the model, I'd build the model. And so it, it, that was my Christmas. So for me now, it's uh, a little bit weird because um, I still want to have that, that model for Christmas. So I normally uh, buy my brother and uh, we sit at Christmas and we put together one of the Technic models. So, okay. But I don't think it would be fair to, uh, to, to tell the guys which one <laughs> they might be. Uh, <laughs> there's no favorites in my, uh, so uh, yeah. So the Lego Technic version of the, uh, the R1200 GS adventure bike. So you have the, the same telelever suspension. You have, of course, uh, steering. You have the uh, two cylinder motor. You even get the, uh, the boxes on the back of the bike. Um, so you can fill them up with all the different things you want and you can go off on your own adventure. So that was great. But and then we have your B model. <laughs> yes. Now this is where it gets a little bit different and a little bit exciting. Okay. And so what we did, we, we took all of these components and of course we normally make an alternate build for all of the LEGO Technic models. And what we did is we took these components, we gave them to our design team and we gave them to BMW design team and we had lots and lots of volumes so they all had them. And they even asked for more because they, everybody got really excited about this. Yeah. And what we did was then to just say, okay, what would you do with these elements? So no rules, no explanation, just uh, okay. Just the elements and uh, the freedom to create something like, like yeah. yeah, we give that to to both design team and the the, the rain result. Like you can see here on the on the poster, it's like all the the design process to create the alternative model. Like with BMW Motorrad, we we just propose some models like uh, from a classic motorcycle, a custom motorcycle, new kind of motorcycle, and then the the flying team was a uh, was a very strong um, uh, option on the on the the, the B model. Uh, so you have the um, the flying helicopter, uh, personal helicopter. Sorry, like 
something that's flying. It was very interesting, and we we all went like very excited about this uh, direction, you know. Mm -hmm. So we decided to keep it like and uh, explore again, but more um, into this uh, flying direction. And we had uh, some of the sketches of uh, BMW Motorrad and uh, and the Lego design technique, the Lego technique design team, and um, went up like with a lot of new um, architecture, like something uh, vertical, something horizontal, uh, something with wings that can move. It's like we, we had to find some, some new way of, um, of moving, you know, so it's, it's like it was very creative this stage, like we had no no bonder, you know, no no limits. It was very inspiring for both the teams and I think it was really cool to see the, the passion and the excitement building within the teams and everybody wanting to come to that meeting uh, and, and being in the, the different workshops that we had over the, the period of time and I think seeing the, the project evolve and then getting to the stage where we then start to put it back into the into the elements was really, really exciting and I think you can tell from the way Sam's explaining it, it's, uh, it was a really inspirational project um, to be part of and uh, and just to see the two design teams being so uh, energized by being able to create this we wanted people to stand next to this and and believe that they could get on it and ride it away the the intention with it is that there's a a, a fan in the front which you can see under the front there it draws air in and then it forces it down uh, in front of where you see the blade on the back so it's in the the center of mass so all of the air that's been drawn in is then forced downwards, which gives you this vertical takeoff uh, possibility. This is just assisting in that uh, um, stability. A bit like a helicopter uh, yeah. controls the, the movement. So this then gives you two points of lift, which then keeps the stability. Mm -hmm. So then when the, the bike is off the ground and you're comfortable and ready to fly, you can, um, somebody's put that the wrong way, you can uh, remove the stand and the bike is now hovering. So then as soon as you want to, to move away, you can then uh, give a little throttle and push the steering forwards and the bike will start to, to move. Then as you, you get faster, the, uh, the blades come up and form a, a flight surface, which then enables you to, uh, to use this thrust um, to go forwards. So you actually then can push forwards even more and you get even more movement forwards, which is then creating lift at the center of mass. So once you've got that point, then you can then use the, the steering blades. You only need a very slight change in the airflow to, uh, to make the, uh, the movement. And then you have full uh, degrees of movement because you are alive and you can move. So just like when you ride a motorcycle, it's your body movement that gets the bike to move. Now you have the same again, but you have it in uh, so many more different directions, just moving your, yourself forwards or backwards. I'm the, the creator expert guy. So I, I'm building all the stuff for Jamie Barad, and uh, right now I'm building the, the Ghostbusters headquarters of, of Marcos. Yes. Uh, and, um, great stuff. And I always am um, excited to see Lego Technic elements in those models as well. So you as, as Technic guys, when uh, um, do you think it is great that it's involved or, or do you think, oh, you couldn't even see the, the Technic parts right here? No, I think it's really great. I mean, you'll see Lego Technic in, in nearly every single set that's out there at the moment. Uh, uh, my daughter just built uh, one of the Lego Friends uh, fairground uh, sets and uh, she was really cool with putting all the, the gear wheels together because then it, it created movement. And I think for us, we know the, the versatility and we know what you can achieve with the LEGO Technic platform. So then to see it being used in many other projects to, to give movement, to give stability, um, it, it's just really cool for us yeah. because it, we know how good the platform is. So now to see uh, it being embraced by so many people and being used to create so many different types of play is, uh, is really exciting, so yes. There have been LEGO Technic figures out there when I was a child. I have one at home, one a white guy. Um, is it because of the different scale of other sets or why are those guys gone? Well, I think the, the, the figure that you talk about, the Technic guy, he uh, disappeared a long time ago now. Uh, I don't I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... Uh, um, 
I don't think I ever had any sets with them in, but uh, the reason he went away was because um, we wanted to be able to create the, the coolest possible models. And as you can see from the assortment that we have at the moment, they're not all in the same scale and they allow us to create different size. So we, we, the restriction of having the figure meant that everything is becoming in the same scale and, and that, that kind of holds us back a little bit. But one of the things that we find during testing is, is really cool and very interesting because um, like with the, the bucket wheel excavator, for example, um, with this model, then it's for a higher age, but they're still kids and, and the kids look at it and they tell us that they would climb the stairs and they would walk along the rails. They would then be able to get to here. And so you see that you've got all of the different uh, rails and walkways on the back of the model uh, and up the side and the ladders. Those are really important to the kids because they are the ones that are putting themselves in that model. They're the ones driving it and they're climbing and, and it's really important that those rails are there. And then with the, the lower age, uh, with the smaller models, then, you know, they have a lot of minifigures and they want to put those figures in the models and things. And, and it's the, then they're using the figure as their driver. So there's that transition of, uh, of ages between, you know, I'm the driver and this is the driver. So it's really cool to see. So we, we enable both uh, types of play. So. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. <laughs> and this is for you one oh, minifigure. Wow. So maybe there is a set you will find. <laughs> We can find somewhere for 30 And this one yes. is for you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you very much.